Up until this point, we've covered a couple of different kinds of hooks. We've covered the hooks that are built into the React library, use state, use effect, etc. We've covered custom hooks. We built and implemented our own custom hook called use client. But the last kind of hook that we haven't touched on are the hooks that are being made increasingly available since the stable release of hooks in React, of hooks that are a part of React libraries. So we're virtually done with our application. There's just one significant problem that needs to be solved, and that is mobile styling. If we resize our window to a mobile viewport, we see that everything's out of place. Our application virtually doesn't work at all on mobile screens. So we want to fix that, and we're going to fix that with the help of a built-in hook, a hook that's built into Material UI called Use Media Query. It's going to allow us to apply media queries throughout our components to be able to change the styles that are used. So you might have noticed that for some of our components that we have these mobile styles. So with the help of Use Media Query, we want to be able to detect when we're on a mobile viewport and apply these mobile styles. We're going to begin with our biggest component, map. So we'll head up to the top, and we want to import this hook. We'll import unstable underscore use media query. The reason it's prefixed with unstable is because this hook was created before the stable release of React hooks before React 16.8, but very soon I believe you'll be able to just import it as use media query, but all the same we're going to name it use media query by saying as use media query, and this will be from at material UI slash core slash use media query. So just like every hook that we've been using, we need to execute it up at the top of our component. So we'll execute use media query. And what we need to pass to this hook is what condition we want to match for, what width, for example, we want to match for, for our viewport. And once we apply that condition, and say, for example, we give it a condition of max width of 200 pixels, whenever the screen is detected by Use Media Query to be less than 200 pixels, the hook will return true. So this will make sense in just a bit. First we need to pass in our condition, and we're going to provide a string with a set of parentheses where we'll say a mobile size will be defined by a max width of 650 pixels. So if the screen width of our user is less than 650 pixels, this hook will return true, and we're going to put the return value in a variable called mobile size. And the first place where we can apply this mobile size value is on our parent div. So now to class name, we can provide a conditional, we'll provide a ternary actually, which will say mobile size question mark. And if we're on a mobile size, we'll use the class coming from classes.rootmobile. Otherwise, it'll just be classes.root. And if we save this and take a look in the browser, we'll see that now our blog area is at the very top when we're on a mobile size. But when we get to a larger size that's not mobile, where that condition is not met, it swings to the right hand side. Next we'll use the use media query hook to prevent when we're on a mobile size zooming by scrolling up or down as is currently possible. And to do that we can head to React Map GL and use a prop called scroll zoom. So we'll enable scrolling to zoom only when we're not on a mobile size. And we apply that. And 
and now we can see it's impossible to scroll to zoom. We just want to be able to scroll up or down on the page. So next we'll add to our header. That needs a lot of work. We'll grab the import for unstable use media query, head to header, and we'll paste that in. We'll use use media query, pass in our condition, condition max width of 650, and get back mobile size. For our first typography component, for our title, we'll add a class name where if we're on a mobile size, we'll apply classes.mobile, otherwise nothing, and therefore an empty string as the class name. Then for the typography which wraps the name, we'll add a class name where if we're on a mobile size, We'll again apply classes.mobile, otherwise an empty string. And once we save, on mobile, both the title and the name of the current user are removed, or rather set to display none. Then within blog, we will again import use media query execute it and we'll get back mobile size then we'll apply to our paper class name if on a mobile size classes.rootmobile, otherwise classes.root. And next we'll head to create pin. And bring in use media query there. Then we'll use it up at the top of create pin. And I know this seems a bit repetitive, but we're doing a lot of work here with our styling. You can see just how straightforward it is to add mobile styles to your application using Use Media Query. And now for the Create Pin text field, for the pin content, if it's a mobile size, we'll include just three rows, otherwise, It'll be six rows for a larger screen. And then one last component where we'll use this hook is within auth in the sign out component. Where on a mobile size, we will remove the sign out text. So here, instead of using class name, we'll use the style prop to say, if we're on mobile, we want to remove the text. So we'll add our ternary within this display rule where if it's a mobile size, it's going to be display none, otherwise display block. Then we can save all of our unsaved components and see the result in the browser. So on a mobile size, we have a much cleaner header. The blog area is up at the top. We can still select pins. We can scroll down and add new content. We can still see pop-ups in our map. We can add new pins. And then if we expand the screen, 
once we're beyond that breakpoint of our media query, our app looks just like it did before.